On Sunday mornings, Daddy and I would sit on the kitchen table and read the theater reviews from the week before. He would make me toast with butter, and I would sit in my nightgown and cross my legs and accent my chin as if I were being photographed for some important magazine. I imagined myself being written about, gossiped about, scandals about my lovers. And I told him this, and he laughed and smiled. Sometimes there was a quote from him, what he thought about some new writer or director. Everyone loved him. Even those who hated him loved him, because they had to listen, had to hear him. What he said mattered. After my mother died, after the accident with that drunk driver, the person who did it never got caught. Every time he walked outside, as we tumbled into the narrow cobblestone streets in the West Village near our apartment, behind every wheel of every car was a potential killer. Sometimes he would just chase the cars, my father, just run after them, throw little crumpled pieces of newspaper at them as if he were throwing stones. He would wave his arms, wander delirious through the streets, yelling at cars, is that the one? Is that the one who? But I was with him. I was with him the whole time. And that made him happy. Was he depressed? Of course he was. I mean, everyone knew it but her. They were going to fire him at the theater. He was dumb, washed out. His last few seasons, his last few shows, they were disasters. That last show he directed, the one that sent us out to that borrowed house on the beach because he had to get away, was about a goldfish who learned to talk. This goldfish starts dating a depressed girl living alone in a third story walk up in Union City, New Jersey. It was supposed to be some kind of quirky comedy. I hate that term, quirky comedy, but it was savaged. It was laughed at. He started taking pills. And the pills were slowing him down because he, because he couldn't anymore. And not like when I first met him, not like when I rejuvenated him after the death of his first wife, no. It slowed down. He settled into a grim kind of life, and I guess I did too. It was a decline. I never imagined I'd be a widow so young. When I was a little girl, I used to look at the old family albums and see him and mom on vacation in Morocco and China and Australia. I used to be so jealous because I wanted to go. Wish that I had been there. And sometimes I used to wonder, Mom, did she jump in front of that car on purpose so that Daddy and I could be alone together without distraction? Sometimes I believe she made that sacrifice for us. Daddy met Liza shortly after Mom died. Liza was a hanger on at that point, just followed him along like a lost cat. I mean, who was she? Some social worker who found cheap meds for heroin addicts? She had never been to the theater before. I had spent so many nights with him at dim bars, listening to bad poetry and drinking cheap beer, getting a headache from the glow of neon lights burning in from the sleazy laundromat across the street. And she, she got all self-righteous at the smell of cigarette smoke and thought beer wasn't ladylike. I can just tell she was a whore in college. <laughs> funeral, all of his friends gathered. People he'd known for years, decades, maybe even since before I was born. They told stories and it, it was almost like I wasn't even a part of his life. I mean, he has no family other than her and so they should have been comforting me. Nice enough. That's what I heard. That was the whisper. Nice enough over and over and over again. I was nice enough for a second wife, a younger woman, someone to fuck. They ignored me and just tripped over her, Brittany, his princess. I was no gold digger. I will say that a million times or only once. I did not marry him for his money. He didn't have much money. That house that we stayed at, that house on the beach, house where he died, it, it was loaned to him by some actor friend. 
some actor friend that he made famous. He walked around at night in a silk bathrobe and slippers. Certainly he acted like he was entitled to it. He acted like he was entitled to a lot of things. Well, I mean, he was a theater director. He had a certain cash, a certain profile, and that to me was sexy. When we met, I was living with some other girls in a small rail car apartment, and we were all trying to make it, and mostly being ignored, but I was a social worker working with at-risk youth, and he, I went to graduate school. I had a savings account. I was doing things right. He was somebody. He liked to dress me up, but he had a daughter. Daddy, are you out there? Did you know that she slept in her dead father's theater? She slept in her dead father's theater the night after he died in brand new silk pajamas she bought just for that occasion. He liked to dress her up. Short skirts, cute little one-piece cotton dresses in the summer which bounced up around her thighs. Tight black stockings and boots in the fall. Skinny jeans with leggings in the winter. And I would wear what he bought for me, and it would be like a little show for him. I mean, that's what men do, isn't it? They dress us up. We dress up for them. We wear nighties and short skirts and low-cut shirts and lingerie, and we sculpt our faces with makeup and do our hair just so, and we become kind of an imaginary object of sorts. I mean, we, we go to the gym and lift weights and crunch our stomachs, but it's really because the human body, on its own, laid bare, it's really not all that impressive. And what am I to her? What is she to me? Is she my stepmother? Am I her stepmother? Stepmommy Liza. Maybe just mommy Liza. Maybe just mommy. Or mom. Aren't we, in some way, aren't we still family? When I was a girl, I ran across the stage. You sat there watching me. Do this, Brit, do that. Act for me. You're better. You are so much better than those other girls. Those real actors who work for me. I could live without them, but not without you. <clears throat> we spent that summer at that house on the beach. I came out to the house on the beach one weekend during the summer the hottest weekend. It was one of the hottest nights of the year and there were parties and bonfires on the beach. There were young people, young, pretty people, boys and girls, and he liked to be around them. He pretended he was still one of them. And she came to stay with us. He was having a party with some actor friends and some young actors and actresses were sitting in the big living room and drinking wine and gazing out at the ocean. And there was a kind of bluish glow out from the moon. And I wore a black and white bikini bathing suit and high heels. I walked around the house and drank champagne. People sat around reading this new play by some hot playwright, trying out different voices and personas. <clears throat> and I sat on this older actor's lap. I didn't know who he was or why he was there, or even remember his name, but I think it was Tommy. And I nibbled at his ear, and I laughed into him and giggled and scraped the tips of my nails against his chest. And Liza watched me, and so did my father. They both watched me. When the play reading was over, I took my new actor friend by the wrist and pulled him into a bathroom down the hall, not far from the living room. Everyone saw us walk away. That night, at the house on the beach, she came, but he hardly noticed her. It was. Almost like he didn't even want her to be there. I mean, I guess she was talking to the people there and she stayed for the reading, but everyone noticed me leave. And then she was gone. I don't even remember when she left or who she left with. It was just weird. They were jealous. Daddy was jealous of the attention I was getting. And her father, he was just having the most wonderful time being surrounded by the people he loved. The people that adored him. It was like all of his problems hadn't happened. He was drinking and laughing and reading the stage directions to this new play. I know Daddy watched me leave. Saw me leave with that older actor. I can just 
imagine him crushing the ice against his teeth, so angry, so angry at me. It was honestly the only time I'd ever seen him truly happy, and, and I really think the only thing that put any damper on it was that she was there. And we went into this bathroom, me and this older actor, Tommy, I think his name was, and he was just, my God, at this point he wanted me so badly. And so I let him have me. I had to, it would have been wrong not to, the way he was just begging and pleading and losing himself. It was sad, kind of a little pathetic. I let him fuck me right there on the bathroom sink with me leaning over, looking at myself in the mirror, watching him through the mirror. At some point, the part everyone left and, well, a few people just crashed on the couch, but Brittany, she was nowhere to be found and honestly nobody really cared. So then we went up to the bedroom and his step was lighter and as I was getting ready for bed, he grabbed me from behind and he pulled me into bed with him and he, he touched me. He touched my legs and my thighs and my, and he kissed me. And it was the first time in a long time. I always loved the way he touched me. After sex, the after me. Tommy, I guess his name was. He just disappeared out of the bathroom of the house. Didn't want to stick around, I guess. I went back to my room and slept a little. Dozed, really. Not restful, not deep. I didn't dream. At some point, I had to pee. I walked down the corridor past the bedroom where I could hear them. I could hear my father and Liza fucking and moaning and it sounded like ecstasy. When he was, he said that he wanted me. He said that he needed me. And I knew in that moment that he had forgotten my mother and embraced a kind of death. A kind of death that's an excuse for living. He said that he needed me because he only felt alive when he was with me. I sat by the door. It was closed, but I could hear it. And I heard. It felt so good. And I saw it in my mind. And I sat by the door and curled up like I was a baby. I rocked back, rocked back and forth and I wanted to pee right there on the floor, but I stopped myself. I wasn't going to be his baby. I fell asleep and woke up when the earliest rays of the sun were creeping along the carpet. The door to the bedroom was open a crack and I pushed my way in. The bed was empty. I saw jumbled sheets and a deep indentation on the mattress. Liza wasn't in the room. My father was lying dead in front of the large mirror. His face and his arms and his body and his mouth were covered with a thick disinfectant the kind you use to clean a bathroom or kitchen floor. There was a harsh, sterile smell around him. I found him when I got back from a run on the beach. She was just lying there with his dead body. Liza found us. When she got home, she found us lying next to each other. He's she screamed like a little baby girl, a terrified baby girl, maybe thinking we were both dead. And then she got to be, well, she got to be pity. She got to be all of their daughters. And, and I never believed it was a suicide like they said. Daddy, I found your body discarded in front of that large mirror. I lay down on the floor next to you. I arranged your arms so that you were hugging me with your hands. It was a happy moment, in the way that moments can sometimes be happy, if you accept them. Moments full and complete, separated from anything else. 
anything called reality. I can still see you out there. When I was a girl and I danced and acted across your stage, all I could see was the dark. All I could see were the lights on my face and the dark. An endless dark which ate me, which consumed me. There's a man waiting for me now. I have a date. His name is Johnny, and I hear he's an aspiring actor. I see him now. He's wearing a sports coat with a shirt open at the collar, shiny black shoes and freshly pressed pants. He looks nice. He's only a few years older than me, and he has a smooth face and soft brown hair that's curled, and I look at him, and I see so much of myself and the world, and I look at him, and I see a future. I can see you now. You gave me that gift. It made me electric. Like I was praying, like I was talking to God. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs>